Hi, my name is John Hakes, and this fall, I am running for a seat on the Moundsview Public School Board. This is my second campaign for a board seat, with the first one happening in 2011. Thanks for joining me today. I know how valuable your time is, and how challenging it can be to carve out enough of it for a family meal or in-person conversation these days, let alone 10 minutes to hear a candidate's pitch. For your planning purposes, I will be talking about three main things. One, my reason for running. Two, advocacy initiatives. And three, claims to credibility. So let's jump right in. I'm primarily running for the board because during the 2013 legislative session, Minnesota lawmakers created a new emphasis on student achievement for the state school districts, and I would like to help bring that about for Moundsview Public Schools. Clearly, Moundsview is already a very successful district in many respects. With its high student average on the ACT exam, its uber accomplished extracurricular teams and clubs, and its high schools whose reputations earn recruitment visits from the top institutions in the country. But even with these distinctions, Moundsview stands to benefit from the newly passed provisions in Minnesota Statute 120B11 and its corresponding title of School District Process for Reviewing Curriculum. As a result of this section of law, effective this school year, Minnesota school boards shall hold annual public meetings to review and revise where appropriate student achievement goals, local assessment outcomes, plans, strategies, and practices for improving curriculum and instruction, and to review district success in realizing the previously adopted student achievement goals and related benchmarks and the improvement plans leading to the world's best workforce. It's quite possible that about now you could be saying, John, that is one boring best campaign idea. Well, maybe so, but it's also important enough that our state lawmakers, representing the will of the people, have passed the annual meeting legislation in conjunction with a more vested district advisory committee model for application in school districts across the state. Currently, as you may know, the Moundsview District fashions its annual work through a district operational plan, of which essential curriculum and effective instruction is one component. But I'm told the legislative expectations included in Statute 120B11 involve a much more elaborate structure and level of community engagement than exists for the district operational plan. As a matter of fact, dialing back a few years, Moundsview once modeled the kind of process expected from districts under the new law. Around 1988 to 1990, evidently, Superintendent Bert Nigren and the school board designed a shared curriculum structure complete with an active citizens group whose input routed through the deputy superintendent at the time. Besides the impetus provided by statute, I believe the rich set of community stakeholders our district possesses and the technological advancements of the last 25 years also warrant a return to the participatory model Moundsview once championed. Surely this is a tall order that won't be accomplished overnight, but effective campaigns need good ideas and sometimes it takes bold initiatives to move the needle even a little bit. So how would a new student achievement emphasis affect my child's education, you ask? Good question. To run this concept to ground, here is a tangible curriculum issue of the kind allowed for in Statute 120B11. Middle school math, specifically intermediate algebra, is a class for which students in Moundsview schools receive grades that factor into their high school transcripts. I'll try and stay out of the weeds on this, but suffice it to say, Moundsview is the only known metropolitan district to include this grade in students' GPAs, which raises potential college admission equity issues between Moundsview students and those of other high-performing districts in the Twin Cities area. After looking into this matter on behalf of interested families on both sides of the question, I have learned the Moundsview School Board played no part in making this college and career-ready decision. As a candidate asking for your vote, I believe this year our board should listen to the Minnesota legislature by bringing student achievement issues like this before them as recommended by Minnesota Statute 120B11. Friends, I realize the main reason for running may not make me the most exciting guy in the election, but I care about good education more than those things. So too do organizations like Parents United for Public Schools, which is led by Mary Sacconi, one of the most widely respected educational authorities in the state of Minnesota. 
After a few years of attending Parents United seminars, there is no organization more thorough or well regarded by legislators of all political persuasions than Parents United is. Parents United is at the forefront of the student achievement issue I addressed in the first part of this talk. As a matter of fact, Moundsview Deputy Superintendent Rick Spacuza frequents Parents United's functions as well. Although Rick has no knowledge of his inclusion here, it would be fantastic to see the Deputy Superintendent work with the experts at Parents United to increase the focus the legislature is seeking for districts. A second advocacy topic concerns a degree I obtained in 2012. As part of a career shift of my own, I completed a Master of Advocacy and Political Leadership degree at the University of Minnesota Duluth. Taught and led by some of Minnesota's most accomplished policy folks, I learned and developed a great deal in my favorite field of study, K-12 education, over 44 weeks of school throughout four semesters of the program. The topic of student writing was a focus area of mine in the program, which you can learn more about by visiting hakesfordistrict621.com. That's hakes, H-A-K-E-S, the number four, district, the numbers 621.com. I'm also proud to announce that for the 13-14 school year, I have been awarded a writing fellowship with the educational interest group known as MINCAN. Let me face facts here. I'm the one non-incumbent in the race, and because of this, you need a few reasons why you should cast your vote for an unknown quantity. What can I offer for credibility? Well, if longevity means anything to you, I attended my first district meetings at the Roseville headquarters in 1999 when my oldest child was one year of age. Then Deputy Superintendent Dan Hooverman was there. So was the board's silver statesman, Bob Helgeson. My involvement in district level matters has continued to this day. In addition to participating on the committees and task forces, I've gotten involved at 621 schools in a number of ways each year as well. My very first kindergarten classroom role had me helping students trace their own feet for one of Mrs. Spellacy's art projects. Later, I found my volunteer niche when asked to provide math and writing assistance at the elementary levels. But I think my all-time favorite jobs have been serving meals on spaghetti dinner night and making special K bars in the cafeteria for the high school dance team. I hope you are glad I left the requisite self-aggrandizing until the end. But I'm also a staunch supporter of the Laurentian environmental visits students make, having served as a chaperone on them for two trips. A dad's night out event I created at a school in 2006 has become a tradition there. During the 2012-13 school year, I had the opportunity to serve a season as high school speech judge and Minnesota History Day judge. And I also attended Minnesota Youth and Government's four-day youth model assembly as a resource advisor. If you've not witnessed the student work at these types of events, I highly recommend doing so. Regarding a specific claim to credibility, I'll leave you with the recent words of Superintendent Dan Hooverman. After 15 years of my asking questions, providing inputs, and sometimes advocating against initiatives being introduced by the administration, he provided this affirmation at a recent candidate meeting with me. During the one-to-one -one chat that we had, Superintendent Hooverman credited me with being very knowledgeable, involved, a supporter of the district, and that he sees me as a legitimate candidate whom he admires for all the headache and heartache that go into running for the school board. Residents of District 621, I will gladly accept the burden of elected office Superintendent Hooverman described, but to do so, I need your vote on November 5th. Thank you for the, taking the time to consider my candidacy.